Hello, Huppeteers. My name is Benjo, and Sassfin asked me to put up a video on the Huppet Gaming about Halo Reach, so here it is. I'm not really going to introduce myself too much because I have pretty much the same story as everybody else. I love video games, and I post them to YouTube. So enough with the introductions, let's get right into this video. I'm playing some Arena Team Slayer on Pinnacle, which is a remake of the Halo 2 map Ascension, for any of you guys who played Halo 2. But before I get into the actual gameplay, I want to break down where all the power weapons spawn. Because in Halo, if you control the power weapons, generally you will win. So let's get right into it. If you spawn on the blue side, on Pinnacle, you can jump right down onto this lower level, and that is where the rocket launcher spawns. Now you can either take that lift to, and it sends you up to the middle, or you can take that teleporter which sends you over to the shotgun, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. The next spot I am going to is for the blue side sniper rifle. Now if you, you can either jump from that higher level down to this lower level to grab the sniper rifle, or you can run down that ramp. Now, if you guys are looking right there, that is the teleporter. That is where you come out of if you leave the rocket launchers. And also in that little area just up to the right is where this shotgun is located. Now let's take a look at the red team and where they spawn. They spawn in Big Tower. And the first thing that if you're on the red team, what you want to do is you want to run down and get this sniper rifle. If you're not that lucky guy that gets a sniper rifle, the other thing you can do is rush the teleporter where generally the rocket launcher will come out of. And you may be thinking to yourself, Ben, why would I want to do that? The guy has a rocket launcher. Why would I want to go up and challenge him? Well, there's a couple good reasons. First of all, you will have the higher vantage point when he comes through that teleporter. You can grab that shotgun. If you throw a grenade and he steps on it in one shotgun blast, you may be able to kill him before he even has a chance to get off a rocket. And then your team is now in control of that rocket launcher. And as you can see, the game has already started. I talked a little bit longer than my flyover, but when I'm on the blue side, even if I'm on the red side, I always run straight for that sniper, try and control that sniper straight away. And the reason is, is because I always talk with my team before the game starts and try and figure out who's the best sniper. And it just so happens that with this group of guys, I am the best sniper, uh, either me or Hutch. But uh, Hutch ended up going for the rocket launcher straight off the spawn, so I grabbed the sniper. And that first death I have is actually my only death, so you guys won't have to watch me die anymore. Now the first thing I want to talk with you guys about is map control. And Woody preaches this in Modern Warfare 2 and spawn traps and stuff like that so you know where the enemy team is spawning. And it is just as important in Halo. Now what I like to do on Pinnacle is control the sm small tower, which is where I'm located right now. And the reason for that is, is because the rockets spawn really close to small tower. And controlling the rockets and actually the power weapons in general in Halo is an integral part of the game. You will find yourself winning a lot more often if you can control the power weapons than if you can't. And it just so happens that on Pinnacle, the two power weapons you really want to control is the sniper and the rockets. If you have control of that and you hold down a side of the map, you will find yourself winning more times than not. And now I kind of want to get into some tips and tricks for you guys. Uh, the people that are making that jump from Modern Warfare 2 to Halo, I know there's a lot of people having trouble with the game basically because they're trying to make this switch. Maybe they've never even played a Halo game before. So um, I just want to give you guys some general knowledge that uh, will hopefully improve your game. Now I have played Halo ever since Halo 1. I actually didn't even know what the Call of Duty series was because I was so into the Halo series. I played Halo 2 like it was my job. And I actually didn't even get to into the Call of Duty series until the very beginning of World at War. But anyways, enough of the history lesson. Let's get on to the pro tips I was talking about. First of all, as you notice here, did you see how slow I was shooting that DMR? You guys really got to work on your timing. I know a lot of people are having problems with the DMR saying that they can't get headshots, stuff like that. And I think the problem that most people are having is that they're just trying to rush their shots. Now, it's going to be hard to slow down your shot, especially if you're on a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. But if you guys can just really work on slowing it down you can get that last headshot now you always have to have good aim and stuff like that but uh, I really do think if you guys just try and slow it down you'll be surprised at how much it helps you and one of the best ways I have found to get my shot on point you know the timing the accuracy stuff like that is a thing called the octagon I'm sure most of you guys have heard of it but if you haven't it's an MMA style octagon looking thing and basically what you can do in there is just shoot at each other with your DMR uh, you work on your headshots, work on your shots in general. You can also, you know, equip a sniper rifle or something like that if you like and work on, you know, your sniping skills as well. But basically what it does is it just increases your accuracy. I mean, it's you against one other guy. I would suggest that you try and play against somebody that maybe is a little bit better than you 
so it's not easy. Um, if you play a complete noob to the game or something like that, I don't think you're really going to get too much out of it. But I mean, before I even get into ranked matches, uh, generally I play arena matches, which is the more competitive area of Team Slayer. But before I get into matches, I, I run into the octagon, man. I just try and get my shot on point, and I, it seems that I do a lot better when I have my shot on point before I start the day. That was a nice little evasion technique I just showed, but I will be talking about that here in just a second. You may be thinking to yourself, man, Ben, this whole octagon thing sounds really awesome, but how do I get it? Because it doesn't come with the game. So I will be attaching a link in the information bar on where you can download it, and all you have to do is go to Bungie.net, Sign on to your Windows Live ID, the same one that is attached to the gamer tag that you want to put the octagon on, and you can download it. Now, if you guys have never been to Bungie.net, it is awesome. I'm going to talk about that for just a second. You can get all your stats from every game. It gives you a breakdown on what your KD is. You know, It gives you a breakdown on how many kills, how many kills you've gotten killed by a certain weapon. It is just an awesome resource. So if you guys haven't been there before, definitely check it out. You can also find all kinds of different game variants, you know, different maps that people have created. Basically, Bungie.net has just revolutionized the way that you look at stats, the way you can find out stats and, you know, share files, stuff like that. Just like Huppet Gaming has revolutionized the sharing gamer tags. You can find good teammates if you've always struggled to find good teammates or feel like you always could have done better if you have good teammates. But there is one more topic I want to cover before this game comes to the end, and that is strafing. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, that's moving left to right because it does take five shots if you hit five shots. Four to the body, one to the head to kill a person. So you're going to be on those one-on-one -on -one battles a lot longer than you would say in Modern Warfare 2. Because in Modern Warfare 2, if you shoot a guy, he's practically dead. So you're going to be looking at the guy for a lot longer. So you got to work on your left to right movements. And you can do that in the octagon. That's another thing you can practice, that strafing, that movement. And not only do you have to work on moving left to right... But you also have to be on target shooting the person when you're moving left to right. So work on that. And finally, the last thing I wanted to talk about is team shooting a person. Now, you're not always going to kill a guy if you see a guy. But you got to make sure you put shots into him. So maybe one of your teammates can clean him up. Because maybe he was able to evade your last shot. But maybe your teammate has a better angle on him and can clean him up. But that brings this video to a close. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If there's anything else you'd like to see a little bit more in depth, any of the tips or tricks I gave you, let me know and I see what I can do. As I have a nice little fail right there because one of my buddies committed suicide and I thought I got the last headshot for the last kill. Final score was 20-1. and 1. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a tremendous day.